Honey, I have to go get more razors. I'll be right back. <laughs> Dollar Shave Club delivers right to your front door. Go ahead, rub it in. For a limited time, head to dollarshaveclub.com slash bitwit to get your first month of the executive razor with a tube of Dr. Carver's shave butter for only $5 with free shipping. After that, razors are just a few bucks a month. Save time and money with Dollar Shave Club. Honey! What's cracking, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are taking a look at a brand new line of products from the folks over at EK Waterblocks. This is their Fluid Gaming Series Liquid Cooling Kit. The one I have on hand with me today is one of three that just hit the market not too long ago. This is the A240G, uh, which stands for uh, 240 millimeter radiator included, as well as the G, denoting that this does come with a GPU block as well. It includes everything you need to cool your CPU and your GPU with a custom loop, which is pretty sweet. For only 240 US. That's insanely cheap, especially for EK quality components. And the way that they're able to lower the price on this so much is because it's all aluminum. Pretty much they've they've kind of uh, opted out of copper this time around for this particular series, and they're just going with aluminum components. That includes the CPU block, the GPU block, the fittings, aluminum radiator. So that's why this is an incredibly light product, but it also makes it much more affordable than the copper alternative. And a big issue with uh, that a lot of people have with aluminum when they hear that word paired with a custom water cooling loop is the issue of galvanic corrosion. But I did a little bit of research and apparently that is only a problem if you're gonna be fornicating different metals together in the same loop. So if you had, you know, say aluminum fittings, but a copper water block, then you could speed up the process of galvanic corrosion. But in the instance of just using aluminum for the entire loop, we should be perfectly fine. I believe EK has found a working solution around that issue. As for the other kits that are available in this all aluminum lineup, there's the, the A120 and the A240, which are fitted with 120 and 240 millimeter radiators respectively, but neither of those come included with the GPU block. This is the only one that does the A240G, hence the, the letter G at the end, um, that you can actually cool both CPU and GPU out of the box. As far as support on the GPU side um, and uh, and how the water block works there, it's pretty much a universal, I don't wanna say universal, but uh, it covers a lot of ground on the high end of NVIDIA's Pascal GPUs. So right out of the box, you get full support for uh, Founders Edition cards, including the GTX 1070, 1080, 1080 Ti, Titan X, and the Titan X Little P. So definitely a wide range of options. The last thing I wanna mention here, this is sort of the roadmap or the game plan for today's video. I have here behind me, you've probably been looking at it, is January's PC of the month. This is a high-end Skylake and Pascal build featuring a 7700K and a water-cooled GTX 1080. You can see here, it's pretty much all decked out with AIO glory, right? So we've got a Kraken X62 currently on the 7700K and the GPU is EVGA's hybrid GTX 1080, which includes a 120 millimeter AIO built right onto it. So what we're gonna be doing today is swapping out the existing cooling solution in this PC with the A240G kit and sort of comparing the thermals uh, between both of those. And I think this is gonna be a really interesting comparison because we're kind of downgrading our radiator solution here. If you think about it, we've got a 280 and a 120 working concurrently on their respective uh, components. Whereas we only have a single 240 millimeter radiator to cool both our CPU and GPU. Now that being said, there's more to a custom loop or any water cooling loop for that matter than the radiator alone. I mean, we're using high-end, you know, high quality uh, EK materials here, uh, probably a much higher quality pump than what's in either of these AIOs and so forth. So at the end of the day, it should be a fun comparison at the very least. And I'm super curious to see how it all stacks up. So on that note, I'm gonna go ahead and shut the heck up. Let's start swapping parts out. It's probably gonna take a while, but uh, we'll get through it. Circle back, run some tests, and see once and for all what this liquid cooling kit is made of. Besides aluminum.
All right, guys, the loop is finally done. Several hours later, this took a while. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just go through all the things that worked for me and the things that didn't. So I guess we could start there. Um, this took a long time. This is a full-blown custom loop after all, so we're not dealing with simple to install AIOs. If you've never done custom water cooling before, thankfully the instructions that EK provides are very clear and well thought out, but this is going to take you some time. If you are the type of user that's just looking for something that's a quick and easy install, this is not the product you're looking for. Also, I forgot to mention that the included tube is 3 8 inch soft flex tubing as you can see here you'll please forgive my saggy runs they don't look the best I kind of wanted to leave some additional slack just to prevent any sort of kinking so this was all function no form so to speak so uh, I apologize if if this is hard to look at but in my defense I feel like I could have made this loop look a lot better had EK included some angled fittings in with this kit. Uh, the fact that you only get these standard fittings and no right angle or 45 degree angle fittings um, is kind of a bummer and it, it, it sort of forces you to use a little bit more slack with your runs because you don't have angled fittings that can point directly to where you wanna go. Um, so that makes things a little bit challenging. It doesn't look quite as elegant as it could be. And I guess that brings up another talking point in the sense that since it would be ill-advised for you to mix any other metals into this loop, such as copper, brass, etc., in order to prevent galvanic corrosion, if you did want to spice up your loop and add some angled fittings in here, they would have to be aluminum, which to my knowledge, it's pretty slim pickings when it comes to aluminum fittings. So if you wanted to tighten up the runs a little bit or just kind of, you know, make the look your own, um, it, it might be a little bit difficult to do that. Hopefully EK sells their own aluminum fittings that are, you know, that are actually angled uh, a la carte. If they did that, then it'd be smooth sailing. Last few things I wanna mention here before we dive into thermals, uh, maintenance is something to consider if you're looking into buying a kit like this, because with an AIO, it's a set it and forget it type of deal. Um, for this, you kind of have to keep an eye on it. It's a custom loop. You hand tightened all of the fittings and you could have easily effed up. So, you know, look into your system once in a while and make sure it's not uh, flooding. Uh, and maybe, you know, if there is a leak, yeah, there's, there's a higher chance. There's just, there's a higher chance that you'll get a leak with a custom water cooled loop. And so that's, that's a risk that you have to be aware of. And that's additional maintenance should any problems occur. All right, that's all nice and gravy, Kyle, but shut the heck up and give us the the temperatures already okay you asked for it so uh, first thing I want to say is we're pretty much using all the same settings that we were on the original January's PC of the month so we're still rocking a 7700 K overclocked to 5 gigahertz at 1.375 volts we still have a GTX 1080 mind you this is a founders edition just because it was you know compatible with the uh, the cooler that we have here the water block I should say but for the most part we're running at the exact same frequency of 2065 max and then that sort of slowed down a little bit to 2050 but still a pretty nice overclock that was set on both of these GPUs and identical overclock at that. I should mention that I've also kept the ambient temperature in my room the same to 26 degrees Celsius throughout the entirety of both these tests. And we're, we're testing GTA 5, 4K max settings for about 25, 30 minutes. And despite what you see here, all the thermal testing was done with the side panel on just like it was back in January. So the old system, the 7700K, the CPU, got up to 76 degrees Celsius. The new system with the new EK water cooling kit, 76 degrees Celsius, identical temperatures. That's actually pretty crazy considering that the Kraken X62 that was on the original January PC of the month was a, it's a 280 millimeter radiator dedicated only to the CPU. Whereas here we have just a 240 millimeter radiator. We've shrunk it a bit and it's sharing and it's also cooling our graphics card. So that's pretty impressive. That just goes to show that there is more to a loop than just the radiator. Um, it's also the quality of the, uh, the the blocks themselves, the pump, the tubing, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and then the graphics card. So on the old system with the, uh, the EVGA hybrid GTX 1080, we were getting 65 degrees Celsius under load. That was the hottest it pretty much got during our gameplay, 65 degrees Celsius. This bad boy, 50. So um, that's a pretty massive drop. That's over 10 degrees, 13 degrees difference. Honestly, these are pretty impressive numbers, like well beyond my expectations, honestly, uh, especially for a single 240 rad. And I think that's cool. I think it's rad that even if you have a smaller or more budget case that has limited radiator options, 
it's nice to know that you can cool your CPU and GPU very well with just a single 240 rad. So summing things up here, I think for 240 bucks, you are getting a lot for your money. And I mean, if you think about it, like the EVGA hybrid GTX 1080, usually for a GPU that has an AIO built onto it, I feel like that's an 80 to $100 premium right there. Uh, and then you've got, you know, the Kraken X62, which is about 150 bucks. Well, let's be conservative and say 120 for a solid AIO, a quality AIO. So that's like almost 240 bucks right there. That's almost the price of this entire kit. So I don't know. And, and this, this kit is definitely, again, we've already talked about it, is not going to appeal to everyone. But honestly, guys, if you just care about performance, uh, thermally speaking, then this is a very viable option, I would say. So let me know what you guys think. That's pretty much all I have to say about it. Very curious to hear your thoughts in the comments below. I'll put a link for, uh, to this guy in the description as well if you want to check it out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to toss me a like on the video if you enjoyed it. You can also check out Bitwit Ultra, my ad-free early access channel for a buck bitty a month. The first two weeks are completely free and you can back out any friggin time that's gonna do it for now guys thank you so much for watching i love y'all have a good one and i'll see you in the next video